Hello and welcome to Viewpoint. I'm joined by Mikhail Samus, a top military expert here in Ukraine. Mikhail, many thanks for joining us. Hello. Uh, Mikhail, we wanted to talk to you today about the, uh, the blackout in Crimea, the Russian-occupied Crimean Peninsula. Um, it hasn't had electricity now for several days um, after electricity pylons in mainland Ukraine were attacked, destroyed, uh, blocking uh, electricity flows into the occupied uh, Crimean Peninsula. Um, it's been quite a controversial uh, case in, in general. I mean, Ukraine hasn't exactly been in a hurry to repair those power lines to get Crimea uh, back online. But um, as a military expert, um, you've obviously seen uh, a different side to this, apart from the sort of civil, uh, the civil problems this has created for residents, for businesses. Um, there is a military aspect here, which perhaps is less well known. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's very interesting that even from the Soviet times, Crimea was kind of aircraft carrier for, for uh, Soviet military power in the Black Sea region. So if Ukraine now is in conflict with Russia, we could understand it like a blackout, power blackout for aircraft carrier, Russian aircraft carrier, with a huge military power now, let's say 30,000 people, militaries, soldiers, sailors, staying uh, in occupied territory. So if we're talking about the power blackout, we need to understand that it's absolutely uh, effective instrument to destroy military power of Russia in Crimea. And do you believe this is what was in the minds of the group or who were behind this, this power blockage, the people who, who destroyed this? Is that what they were partially... I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but as a military analyst, I could say that it, it's pretty effective. It's pretty effective result because if you could imagine how much electricity you need to keep, for example, ships uh, to to be in, in in normal service, like air defense system, it's a huge power to be uh, able to uh, control the air air space, for example, around the uh, Black Sea fleet to to keep all of missiles, all of ships in proper conditions. It's absolutely, absolutely huge power. And in this case, I absolutely support the situation because when Russia trying to uh, make, to create, to collect forces in this region to uh, actually to threat NATO, for example, because always uh, they're talking about, the, uh, for example, like tactical missiles with nuclear uh, heads in, in Crimea, for uh, or against uh, uh, anti-missile base uh, in, in Romania, for example. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. to, to keep these missiles in proper conditions, they need a lot of power. So blackout now uh, help NATO, actually, to be uh, more secure. And I think this comes as Russia is involved in Syria as well, as stepping up its operations there in support of President Bashar al-Assad. I feel like it's not a coincidence that uh, this blackout is coming now. And I was saying it's affecting the Russian military. The Russian military at the moment is uh, obviously spread rather thin. Um, I wonder, from your point of view, what does this mean for the Russian military as it is trying to uh, become uh, you know, involved more in, in the Middle East as well? Yeah, but... Uh very interesting, but some, some of the Black Sea fleet ships participating in uh, this operation because you see the Black Sea uh, fleet is responsible for this Tartus base in, in Syria. It's, it's like uh, normally. Of course, the, the ships from Northern Fleet or Baltic, Baltic Fleet could participate, but the Black Sea fleet is uh, uh, responsible for, for this operation, actually. And it's, it's, it's very interesting that these ships which is actually needs to, do, to be uh, in service in, in the Black Sea Fleet, uh, ma main naval base in Sevastopol, now under, under uh, attack of power blackout. So it's, it's all, all of connecting uh, problem, problems, and of course it's not uh, make, uh, make a Russian position uh, stronger, even, even in, in, in middle, middle uh, situations. So I would say that... Uh, uh, it's, it's not a very nice situation for Putin because uh, you told about the civilian information background for, for blackout because it, uh, they need to uh, explain what's actually going on because after one and, and, uh, more than one and a half year of uh, Russian occupation of Crimea, 
uh, they do, do, don't have any uh, capabilities, even uh, even supply energy to naval base. No. And uh, and uh, I, I'd like to say that Novorossiysk naval base, uh, it, it's not uh, it's not a solution for for this problem because during the winter period they have a, a super strong Bora winter. Uh, wind there, uh -huh. wind, winter wind oh, yes. there, and, it, and it's, it's impossible uh, to, to base uh, military ships there. So they need to base in Sevastopol. In Sevastopol now they don't have enough energy. Yeah. So it's, it's absolutely, uh, let's say, crazy situation for Russian forces there. And uh, uh, a couple of days ago, to, uh, in, in reaction for this power blackout, they sent a couple uh, battalion task forces for, with uh, uh, airborne division from Russia to, to Crimea. I think they, maybe they uh, have some military ways to, to solve the problem, maybe attack Kherson Oblast. Right. We, we should, account, we should uh, take well, it to it's, account. It's an incredible scenario. I mean, I, I, I was reading one commentator who did suggest that actually what can the Kremlin really do here? I mean, short of sending troops or something into mainland Ukraine to try to, uh, you know, restore restore power, restore order. Um, it seems like a, a crazy way to go, but uh, obviously, you know, we can't put anything past the Kremlin at, at this point uh, from what we've seen over the last couple of years. Um, but uh, but I on that point, I mean, does this not risk sort of escalating the conflict in a way? I mean, this could push Crimea further away from Ukraine, couldn't it? I mean, Russia could, this could be the wake-up call that the Kremlin needs to actually uh, get Crimea in order, create you know, proper power sources there, proper transport links, and, and really make it become a part of the Russian Federation. Do you see that as a, as a danger? I, I think it's maybe some opposite situation, because, uh, you know, when, when Putin proclaimed the uh, Crimea is Russian land and uh, Crimeans is a Russian people, it, it was pretty pretty long time ago. They, they, if, if Russia is a great country, they, they had a lot of time to, to make uh, the transportation infrastructure, to make electricity infrastructure, whatever. Now they have a, a, a problem, even, even to show the to television, Russian television just stopped now, and, and they, they, they can't even to support the level of propaganda. It's a it's danger, really dangerous situation. And uh, I like to say that I saw the reaction of uh, pro-Ukrainian part of Crimeans, they support the uh, this situation. They suppose the, I mean they're yeah. suffering. Yeah. In Crimea, but yeah, because they yeah, that. because the 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 problem is that uh, Russian uh, for uh, for this long period didn't make any any uh, development for uh, for 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 people. No. They just uh, just killing business, middle small business, yeah. killing killing uh, tourist uh, tourist uh, places, killing everything that uh, naturally belongs to Crimea. In, in all of all of hundreds of years, just creating the military base there, yeah. a lot of uh, militaries, a lot of ships, a lot of uh, uh, aircraft. So uh, I think, and, and normal people like businessmen who would like to to see uh, Crimea like a great tourist place for all of uh, Europeans, for example, uh, they uh, supporting power blackout because it it maybe it will. Uh, make some steps to deoccupation, for deoccupation of, of Crimea, because Putin now have, has a, a tough time yeah. to show something, but it's impossible. They even cannot provide electricity. What about uh, stuff like uh, secure the, uh, these people in uh, more high, uh, let's say, standards for life, Yes, I mean electricity. Like they, but, electricity is so basic that yeah, it's, you know, it's kind if, of it's they can't it's, get that right. I think the the Crimeans people they, they had electricity for hundred of hundred years and, and now they stopped after just uh, Russia arrived to 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 region. So it's kind of uh, you know a very interesting situation. Absolutely, it, it is an interesting situation. It's one that we will of course be monitoring closely, as I'm sure you will as well. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Thank you. You've been watching uh, Viewpoint. I've been joined by Mikhail Samus. He's a top military expert here in Kiev. We've been discussing the blackout in the Russian-occupied Crimean Peninsula. That's all we have time for today. Join us again next time.